What's going on, Nation? In this week's episode of the Versus series, we're going to be comparing the front squat to the back squat. Which is better for building muscle? Which builds more strength? And which has a lesser risk of an injury? Now, if you missed the last episode where I compared the barbell bench press versus the dumbbell bench press, I'll post a link to that in the description box below so you guys can check it out. But before we begin this video, let's talk a bit about why we squat and learn a bit more about the core. Now, the core refers to the group of muscles that are used to stabilize the thorax and the pelvis during dynamic movements, such as the front and back squat, and include the pelvic floor muscles, the transverse abdominis, multifidus, internal and external obliques, rectus abdominis, erectus spinae, and the diaphragm. Now, in general, squatting builds stronger muscles that can lead to an increase in speed and power, which can be applied to general lifting purposes or sports. However, when evaluating the risks and the benefits of each exercise, you first must take into consideration the reason why someone is squatting, their strengths, their weaknesses, and their goals. Many studies have shown that both back and front squats recruit many major muscle groups such as the upper back, abdominals, lumbar spine, glutes, thigh adductors, quads, hamstrings, and calves. But the emphasis on these muscles shifts from one lift to the other. So in order to see which exercise is best for you, let's compare them starting with the barbell back squat. The barbell back squat focuses more on the hips, glutes, and lumbar spine and places more of the load on the posterior half of your body. The main muscles involved are your glutes, hamstrings, lower back, and calves, and you'll activate your core for stabilizing purposes as well. To perform a barbell back squat, what you're going to do is get your hands on the bar just outside of shoulder width, Get under it and then rest it across your shoulders and traps. Once you're in place here, you're feeling nice and strong, then lift the bar up and take a few steps back. Now you're going to notice that I'm having a high bar position right here. When you squat, you can choose to do high bar or you can choose to do low bar, which looks more like this. But that's not something I'm going to discuss in today's video. If you want to learn more about high bar versus low bar squatting, I'll post a link down in the info section below for you guys to check it out. But I will say, in terms of muscle engagement, not talking about strength, muscle engagement, it's all the same whether you're high bar or low bar squatting. Once you have the bar across your shoulders, what you're going to do is stand with your feet about shoulder width apart. I like to use a bit more of a narrow stance. Then I like to slightly point my toes out as well. When you squat, whether you're doing high or low bar, you can choose to do a bit of a wider stance like this. It just comes down to flexibility and personal preference. So I like to be just like this, and then what you're going to do to perform the movement is keep your chest up, keep your elbows forward just like this, keep your head up like that, and before you descend to the ground, you're going to take in a breath to keep your core nice and tight so that you don't fold over during the squat. So take in a breath, all the way down, once you go as low as you can, you're going to push through your feet and come back to the top of the movement. And as you notice, I kept my chest up and my head up the entire time because I kept my core nice and tight. So let's do a few more reps. All the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. And I want to show you guys a few reps from the side as well because you're going to notice with this squat that you're actually sitting back a bit as you descend. And this is what puts more of the emphasis on your glutes and hamstrings is that you're actually sitting back and then going down and then pushing back up. So it's not just down like this, it's sit back and come down and go back up. One more time, sit back, come back up. Now another thing you need to keep in mind for when performing this movement is that you need to engage a core before descending by drawing in a breath and then holding it while flexing your core. This is how you stabilize your body so you don't bend in half under the pressure of the barbell on your back and as you become stronger, you will use the same technique when lifting heavier weights while wearing a weight belt. For those of you who would like to learn more about how to properly use a weight belt, I'll put a link down in the info section below to one of my earlier videos. Now let's take a look at the barbell front squat. This movement places more emphasis on the quads and the upper back, but the main difference is that because you're holding the barbell in front of your body, this exercise requires a more upright posture, which will minimize flexion in the lumbar spine. 
However, because of this, you will need much more core stabilization throughout the movement to avoid spinal flexion or the rounding of your upper back. Now the reason why this movement places more emphasis on your quads is because there is more knee flexion. This is because the barbell is in front of your body resting across your anterior deltoids and shoulders. So what's going to happen is this is going to pull you forward as you descend, which takes a bit of the emphasis off your glutes and hips as well. To perform a front squat, we're going to approach the bar a bit different. What you're going to do is take your fingertips, place them on the barbell about shoulder width apart. Now you're not actually holding the barbell with your hands with a tight grip to do this because you're not going to have the amount of flexibility you need in your wrists and elbows to hold the bar like this. It's actually more like your hands are, are finger tipping the bar and you're holding it up with your clavicles and anterior deltoids and your hands are just kind of pushing it into your neck. So with that being said, what you're going to do is put your hands in the bar just like this. I like to go fingertips, shoulder width apart, and then step underneath, which puts your wrists in extension and your elbows into flexion. Push the bar into your neck, and then lift it off just like that. So now you guys can see why I need a bit more flexibility to hold this bar in place. Once in position, what you're going to do is stand with your feet shoulder width apart, your toes facing forward, and then as you descend, you're going to push your knees out. And you're going to descend all the way down by keeping your chest upright and keeping your core tight. So take in a breath, all the way down, push your knees out, keep that core nice and tight, come back to the top, pushing through your feet as well. We'll do another one, keep those elbows high as you descend, back up, just like that. And you guys are going to notice as I go up and down, I'm doing my best to make sure I don't go into lumbar spine flexion. And I'm keeping my chest up and I'm not letting my elbows dip down. A couple more reps. One more. So the hand position that I was using is known as a clean grip. But you can also choose to crisscross your arms over the barbell if that's more comfortable for you. The grip you choose will be determined by what you're training for. For example, if you are incorporating cleans and snatches into your weekly routine, you will want to front squat with the clean grip, so like this, in order to build strength and carryover technique for the bottom or the catch position of the clean and snatch, which is when you catch the, catch the bar up here and your butts to the floor. If your routine doesn't consist of a clean and snatch or overhead pressing movements from the racked position, this is the racked position, guys, with the bars going across your shoulders, then you should be fine with the crisscross if that's more comfortable for you. Now, to better understand which exercise is best for you in terms of building muscle and strength, let's take a closer look at joint flexibility requirements as well as shoulder, lumbar spine, and knee safety and overall power and strength from each movement. First up is going to be joint flexibility. Front squats require more flexibility than back squats. This is because you need to have enough flexibility in your back to maintain the elbow flexion you need to keep your chest up during the movement. Remember, this is elbow flexion, guys, keeping your elbows up. Your shoulders and wrists need to be flexible as well so that you can maintain your hand position on the barbell when using the clean grip form. So when you descend, you will also require more flexibility throughout your lower back and glutes to allow you to fully descend and really take advantage of the knee flexion required to perform the movement and place more emphasis on your quads while keeping your knees in line with your toes. Lastly, you will need more ankle mobility to help you keep your feet flat and your lower back from rounding at the bottom of the movement as well. However, don't think that because front squats require a bit more flexibility that back squats are a walk in the park. Yes, you don't need as much shoulder, glute, and ankle flexibility, but nonetheless, flexibility in these areas will be required in order to reach maximum depth on each rep. Also, most people don't realize that you are still placing your shoulders under a tremendous amount of stress during a back squat because you have to reach back and hold the barbell, especially when using a low bar position. So what that means is that you will need a great deal of shoulder flexibility to comfortably perform a back squat when compared to a front squat. Now with that being said, let's talk a bit more about shoulder safety with these two exercises. When performing a back squat with a high or low bar position, this requires your shoulders to be externally rotated and abducted. That's why you're pinched back like this trying to hold the bar. Now, if you have healthy shoulders and properly stretch them and warm them up before you start the movement, 
chances are you won't feel a thing. But if you have a history of shoulder injuries, you may feel a lot of pressure while in this position, making it harder for you to hold the barbell in place. In fact, oftentimes this is what leads to people to this was yeah, this is what leads people to fall forward during a squat because without realizing it, as they descend, they are pushing themselves forward due to the pressure in their shoulders. As for front squats, because you place the bar across your anterior deltoids and clavicles, so right across here, guys, if you have a pre-existing shoulder injury, this position may feel a bit more comfortable. However, if you suffer from an AC joint separation or shoulder impingement, this position might not be easy for you to maintain for an entire set of repetitions. Also, because the front squat puts your elbows in full flexion and your wrists in full extension, if you have a pre-existing injury in those areas, you could re-injure or aggravate them while front squatting. Now since we started with the shoulders, let's move down the body and talk about lumbar spine safety. This is more of a neutral area when it comes to the back and front squat. Both movements require you to maintain an upright position with your chest and a tight core as you go down from the top of the movement to keep it from going into spinal flexion. Although front squats require less forward leaning as you descend, if both exercises are done properly, they are equally as safe for your lumbar spine. As for knee safety, both the back and front squat can strengthen the knees to reduce the potential for a ligament or meniscus tear. One of the main muscles that helps stabilize the knee is the vastus medialis oblique, which is your inner quad or the teardrop that we all talk about. When compared to each other, the front squat actually targets this muscle better than the back squat. Another great thing about front squats is that because the form almost forces you to push your knees out, you can prevent valgus knee collapse, which is also known as knee knock, or when your knees collapse in during the movement. But also keep in mind that if you squat with a wider stance, which will place more of the weight on your glutes and adductors, you can lessen the chances of valgus knee collapse during the movement as well. I want you guys to really take this to heart when you train because valgus knee collapse is a common cause of an ACL tear and I see people in the gym all the time letting their legs fold in while they squat and the last thing I want for you is a serious injury. So which exercise should you be using in your weekly routine? Well, let's do a final recap before we make a decision. And since we just covered knee safety, let's start there. Front squats place a bit more emphasis on the vastus medialis oblique, which is one of the main muscles that helps stabilize your knee. Also, because front squats force you to push your knees out as you descend, you can easily avoid knee knock, which can lead to a possible ACL tear. However, we can also avoid knee knock by back squatting with a wider stance. Now, if you are currently having any sort of knee issue, because back squats place more of the load on your hips than your knees by having the barbell on your back, this will allow you to sit back more during the movement, avoiding excess excessive knee flexion when compared to the front squat. So my conclusion, really, when it comes to knee safety, is it's a tie between both of them. Now let's talk about shoulder safety. If you're an athlete that performs a lot of overhead movements like a basketball player, chances are that you're already dealing with some sort of shoulder injury already that you don't need to make worse. With that being said, front squats can help you avoid additional shoulder pain due to the clean grip or cross grip position with your arms to perform the movement. So clean grip or cross arm. As we discussed earlier, you have to keep your shoulders in an uncomfortable position to hold the barbell in place, causing a lot of pressure to the muscles in that area during the movement when performing a back squat. So remember, this is normal guys, so standing like this. When you do a back squat, you have to really push your shoulders back, which can cause uncomfortable shoulder pain. So if you're an overhead athlete, front squats would be a better choice for your goals. But what if you're not an overhead athlete and you're looking for overall strength and hip explosive power? Well, if that's the case, the clear choice would be back squats. This is due to a few reasons. Number one, squats build a tremendous amount of strength in the muscles that extend your hips, such as your glutes and hamstrings. These are the muscles that are going to provide you with the explosive power you need for sprinting and jumping. Number two, you are going to be limited by the amount of weight you can hold on the front of your shoulders during a front squat. Obviously, you could, if you're looking to increase your maximum strength, you're going to need to train with the back squat because you're always going to be able to train with more weight. And with more weight comes more strength gains. Now the last comparison I want to make is which exercise will better prepare you for carryover movements like cleans and snatches, and that exercise is the front squat. The front squat mimics the movement pattern from the bottom position after catching a clean or snatch. 
So even though you can lift more weight from the bottom position of a back squat, that strength won't necessarily carry over to a cleaner snatch for the obvious reason of that the bar is placed in a totally different position. So which exercise should you choose to build more muscle and strength? Well, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to your overall training goal, joint flexibility, past our current injuries, and if you're an overhead athlete. If you want to place more emphasis on your glutes and hamstrings, obviously the clear choice is back squats. But if you want to train your quads harder and really bring out that teardrop, then you should be training with front squats. Also, a lot of people think that just because they can squat more weight with a back squat, this, that this makes it automatically better. Well, the truth is that if you will always be able to squat more with a back squat because of the placement on the bar on your back. This combined with your hand position will allow you to transfer more driving force into the bar from the bottom position. A good rule of thumb, however, is that for a balanced lifter, that they should be able to front squat around 70 to 85% of their back squat. So for example, if you, front, if you back squat 100 pounds for 10 repetitions, you should be able to front squat 70 to 85 pounds for 10 repetitions. However, if you live your life by half reps, this will not hold true for you. So if you are a half rep squatter, cut the shit and do it right. And with that being said, because front squats require the barbell to be held across your shoulders, it makes it impossible to lean forward and cause spinal flexion. So what that means is front squats will actually improve your back squat technique by teaching you to keep your torso more erect during the movement. So the real conclusion guys, both exercises engage all of the same muscles with a slight variation of which muscles have a bit more emphasis placed on them to complete the movement. Both squats will build muscle and make you stronger, but obviously if you're a power lifter, back squats will be more beneficial for you to have a higher total score during a meet, and if you're an Olympic lifter, front squats will carry over into helping you have a stronger clean and snatch. And if you're a bodybuilder, you will want the benefits of both exercises. So if you need more work on your glutes and hamstrings, you're going to do a barbell back squat. If you want to focus more on your quads and bring out that teardrop, then you're going to obviously incorporate more front squats into your weekly routine. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions or suggestions for future versus videos, be sure to leave those comments down in the comment section below. And if you need a full 12 week program to help you build muscle and strength, be sure to click the link down in the info section below for my 12 week transformation challenge. I'll see you guys next time.